Jumping a bike is becoming quite a fundamental part of actually cross-country riding nowadays because the bikes are getting so good that you can do pretty much anything on them. Last summer we did an introduction to cross-country bike jumping using mountain bike hopper ramps. Today we're pushing it on a bit, again using M2B hoppers. We're going to do some advanced cross-country jumping skills. Thanks to MTB Hopper for supplying the ramps. We've got some small to large. That is the light, the pro, and the little air. And behind me, we've actually got their pad, a down slope to land on. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, especially if you like learning mountain bike skills. We have a skills video every Wednesday. There are different types of jump, and we're going to use these three different takeoffs for different things today. Starting with the light, the smallest one, you can use this as a, what I'd call a fly off, so a takeoff without any landing. So you can jump to flat, and that's great for learning the basics of getting into the air. You can then move it on and actually move this uh, takeoff and maybe jump into a slope like a grass bank to start making things a bit smoother. You can then go a little bit bigger. But the fly off is really the first step of jumping, learning how the bike reacts when you hit that takeoff and learning to move your body with that ramp. Moving up the scale of progression from a fly off, the next sort of easiest jump, where you're trying to push your limits a little bit, is a tabletop, where you've either got a takeoff and a landing as something in the middle, or like I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually push this takeoff right up to the landing so there's no gap to clear. You may notice I'm riding a trail bike today, but I've got Ben, a willing participant who's riding a cross country bike, who's gonna hopefully progress his cross country jumping skills today. Okay, starting off then on the light ramp, literally set up on the lowest it can go, so you can actually make it higher if you adjust these legs. And as I said, it's a fly off two flats. This is all about just getting a feel for the bike coming up. You don't want to be going too big, landing to flat, especially on a cross country bike. Ben's riding Canyon Lux, like, only got 100 mil of travel. So you find that flat landings, you will go throughout travel super quick. So again, like I said, trying to match the landing, land two wheels at the same time, and get a feel for getting into the air. Nice. But often you'll see a jump like this, and on a cross-country bike, you might actually want to take this as low as you possibly can just to smooth out the landing. So that's what we call soaking up. And the best way I think of, a, of trying to practice this or imagine this is imagine you've got a low ceiling. If you hit this and take off, you can hit your head. So what you need to do is let the bike come up to you. So it's important that you've got your seat out of the way. Hopefully you've got a drop seat post. Most cross-country bikes do now. And you've got to let that space, you know, do the hard work really. So as your front wheel hits that takeoff, you let the bars come up to you. And as the rear wheel hits it, you then let your feet come up to you. So you're nice and squashed. As you go off the end of that takeoff, then you can let the bike down to the ground, nice and smooth, super safe. Right, so that's getting into the air and then learning how to control the takeoff to get down to the ground nice and quickly. So that's kind of taking the energy out of the takeoff. The next thing is learning how to put energy in, so to start making height from a jump. So you can either use a little takeoff like that and put it into a down slope, because now you're going to want to find a smoother landing. Or, as we've got them now, I'm going to use this pad landing and the pro takeoff and start talking to Ben about making a bit of height. So Ben, how do you feel about jumping on a cross-country bike? <laughs> it's not quite what I'm used to, a little bit more twitchy. Uh, I think the longer stem uh, is playing a part and the, the steeper angles, but uh, yeah, I think I'm getting there. Always feels to me like you can kind of do a lot on a cross-country bike, but you've got a smaller margin for error, so you've got to land nice and smooth. Uh, going to talk about making height, how's your bunny hop? Pretty good, I think. Oh. I haven't ridden in clips for a while, at least on the mountain bike, so uh, yeah, that's kind of helping. Uh, I can do it on flat pedals as well. Oh, nice. So, we start off with this ramp, kind of pushed up, so it's not quite a tabletop because there's a little bit of a gap in the middle, but super easy, nice and slow, get a feel for the shape, and then I'm going to drag the takeoff back and we talk about going slower and making a little bit of height. So getting a jump nice is all about judging how much lift you get and then sort of adjusting your speed. So hopefully you hit that takeoff with a perfect amount of speed and you really don't need to do much to clear the jump and land perfectly. However, you don't always get it right. So sometimes you're going too fast, you need to take out some of the energy by soaking up, like I've talked about already. Other times you need to make height and it's really similar to doing a bunny hop. You can call it a preload, uh, a pump, whatever it is, you're kind of trying to make more height out of the takeoff. 
And the key to that is getting your timing right. So this is a nice little trick for learning how to get your timing right. Basically, um, the sort of most common mistake here is people trying to lift the back wheel too early. So they feel like they just want to jump and take both wheels into the air at the same time. It doesn't work like that. You need to do it front wheel and then back wheel. The faster you'll hit and take off, the quicker those two, the closer they are together. But it's a really nice way of practicing it is to put a stick on the ground, roll in, and try and use that stick as like a, as a jump, like a little bump, and you take off. So you need to bump your front wheel into it as you're doing your nice kind of manual technique, so down and back on the bike. So you bump the front wheel into there, and then you need to pause in that same position right until your rear wheel touches the stick. And that's when you stand up, because you'll be down and back, nice little manual position. And then as the back wheel touches, you stand up and forward, and that's going to pop your rear wheel. Often you'll find people go too early, like I said, and they'll do that nice front wheel lift, but actually before the back wheel gets there, they'll want to stand up and forward. So in the case of a jump, you're not using the whole of the takeoff then. You want to pop your front and rear wheel at the same point on the jump, not at the same time. The stick trick is super simple, but it really works because you need to learn sort of the timings for making height. Maybe that's a little bit too big to move. So, like I said, if sometimes you'll be too slow and you kind of only realise it when you're right at the takeoff. That's when you need to make height, otherwise you're in trouble. So you need taking out some of the energy and adding some energy, and that's how you get really good at doing jumps. When it comes to trying jumps the first time, I always try and walk it so I know what it's going to look like and sort of how it's going to feel when I get there. You don't want to be riding in and thinking, whoa, hang on, I'm going quite far up and it's quite steep as you hit it. That can be a bit scary, so walk on in, look at the gap, look at the landing, and from there, hopefully, you can judge your speed quite well. And then, when you get here, you're gonna feel nice and confident and not panic. You've got a bit of a case pad on this landing, which you don't wanna use, but it's there just in case. Um, but really, with the landing, it's kind of same as a takeoff. You kind of want your front wheel to take off there, and then your back wheel. And then you want your front wheel to land as near the top as you can get it, and then your back wheel. Often you see people start matching the angle, but actually landing two wheels at the same time, and that can mean that the front wheel lands really quite low on the downslope, which is okay if you're straight and, and it's going all right, but if you've gone a bit sideways in midair, and that's normally either because you haven't hopped quite nicely, you've had to make height, but you've used a bit of a pull on the bars, or there's a bit of wind, that can send you sideways as well. Then if your front wheel doesn't land until down here, then you can get in trouble. And they're quite bad crashes. We see them quite a lot. People's fails they send in using the uploader. So again, try and land front wheel, then back wheel, as near to the top as you can, super safe and really smooth. It's quite a flat run into this jump, and it's a decent sized takeoff. Ooh, just on top. See Ben landed on that case pad, but it's right. It's kind of what I was gonna say, is it's quite high, waist high. You actually lose a fair bit of speed coming into this. It's a bit deceptive, kind of flat, and then it slows you down. So I always think, in this setup now, I'll go just a notch faster than I think I need to. To begin with, obviously don't go too fast, but touch faster. We've got a bit of a headwind as well, and try and land on that right if you can, I guess. As soon as that gap comes in, starts playing mind games. <laughs> Absolutely nailed it, like landed right on that edge there. Kind of looked a little bit slow again coming in, but good speed. And you're making a bit of pop, you can see you're doing a little dum -dum, that nice shape. What I would say now to get a real good feel of it is go faster, bring it crazy, and try and soak it up a little bit so you get a feel for doing both sides of scale. Yeah. So that in the future when we kind of, I don't know, we'll make it a bit bigger, you can then decide right on the takeoff, you look to land and think, well, I can judge it a bit better. Do I need to pop or do I need to soak it up? So a bit quicker and let the bike come up to you and still try and land in that same spot. Right, Ben's absolutely nailing it now. Um, as I've talked about a little bit, making height is all about that good bunny hop technique. So if you don't know how to do that, maybe go and check out that last video I did from last summer. It talks all about making sure you're doing it right. Ben's doing it great. So then it's all about kind of what we're doing now is trying to learn how speed dictates what happens on the jump. So going too fast, you want to soak it up going too slow, you want to use that hop to make height, and then jump in, really, that's kind of it. It's then the next thing is just about experience. You've got to be able to do hundreds and hundreds of jumps and then look at it and have a really good judge of what it's going to take to get there. 
and get that jump nail. It's not going to go right every time. So then you might need to think about, you know, the making height or soaking it up. But really, once you've got the sort of basics of it, it's all about experience and hopefully you should know how it feels and what you need to do every time. So we're going to spice it up a little bit. I think we'll leave the little air alone for now and actually just make this pro a bit taller. So it's going to make it a bit steeper on the takeoff. And then I'll drag it a bit bigger, but also make the landing pad taller as well. Confidence is a really big factor when it comes to hitting jumps. So check out our video on how to do that if you've not seen that already. But the biggest thing really is kind of just gradually increasing the size of your jumps. Don't just go to the biggest jump you can find and hut your meat. Great thing about these ramps, obviously I can just drag it a little bit at a time. So, you know, it really does make quite a big difference. Even if you pull it like that, 10 centimeters from here, actually it's quite a big uh, gap. So just build the confidence a little bit at a time. It can be really helpful to follow someone into the jump to get the speed right first time. Just bear in mind that some people have different techniques on jumps. Some would rather hit them really fast and soak them up. Others prefer to go a bit slow and go high. So watch the person hit the jump first, then follow. If you're pushing the jumps to the limit of what you're comfortable with, then make sure you try and relax, keep breathing, try and stay loose on your bike and trust in your technique. If it's still too scary, then don't go any bigger. I think we shall spice it up a bit more, but might be getting a little bit big for a cross-country bike now. This one is now steeper, so you're going to go higher, get some pop. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's good. You have to make a bit of height. Because of the shape of it now, you want to sort of go higher. If you go too low, you kind of clip the back of the landing almost. All right, actually, yeah. I, I find it easier to go faster and push through than pop, at least on a cross-country bike. Uh, just, I think it's a long stem, so yeah, it's not too bad. Maxing it out, highest on the takeoff on the landing, see what it's like. It is, isn't it? It's kind of the same approach when you're going really big with these things. It's really nice that you can just move it six inches at a time. But the faster you hit a takeoff, like I need to go with it now, I need to let it pop me to get the height. If I go really fast and push through it, I reckon I would just sort of not get the trajectory to clear it. I would end up going too low and you'd have to go so fast to clear it, it wouldn't work. So I need to pop into it and use that shape of that jump to send me high to get the length. Thanks for your cross-country skills, Ben. Good jumping as well. Um, like I said, any sort of jumping is take it slowly, build up. Especially on a cross-country bike, I think you've got smaller margins of error with sort of thinner, lighter weight components that you need to make sure you've got it dialed before you go too big. Thumbs up if you love jumping your cross-country rig.